Hi there, I'm Robert Hammond. Uh, I'm an occult researcher, or shall I say uh, amateur occult researcher. And this right here is the second part of a video I'm doing on Julian Huxley, brother of Aldous Huxley. Um, if you haven't seen the first part of the video, uh, basically I explained how uh, people like uh, Aldous Huxley, brother to Julian Huxley, have had put truth as fiction um, to basically uh, let the masses know the agenda for the world future, uh, brave new world, uh, new world order, uh, under a, basically a scientific dictatorship. Um, and here I have uh, the book I'm discussing, Essays in Popular Science by Julian Huxley. <coughs> Is that there? And I'm basically uh, going to go into it as best I can. Um, it might be a bit sketchy. I've, I've just I've photocopied pieces that I think are relevant, um, and basically we can kind of look through it together and and uh, kind of break it down. and And hopefully you'll see uh, a connection between um, Brave New World and this uh, book here with this guy. Uh, so Julian Huxley is a um, biologist and. Uh, was, sorry, a biologist, they both passed away now, an eugenicist into eugenics. Uh, and basically the, the whole idea for both of the, these books, um, what they bo were both um, preaching, is basically a scientific dictatorship. And that just doesn't involve um, mind control in the forms of television and things like that. It involves controlling you through your biology by intervention, basically, um, you know, we're not talking natural selection, we're talking, um, you know, scientific intervention um, so that they can control you totally, um, basically. Um, and in this book he discusses very cleverly, well, no, it's not really cleverly, he, he goes into biology in general with animals, you know, tadpoles, frogs, and then he switches it to humans, but there's there's more, more, in, more to it than that, he's... Um, mentions H.G. Wells and things like that. We'll find out in a minute. Um, <clears throat> so, just a bit about Julian Huxley. His brother to Aldous Huxley. Um, he was born in 1887. Um, <clears throat> his fields are evolutionary biology. Uh, his institutions that he belonged to was Oxford University, uh, King's College London, uh, the Zoological Society, and UNESCO, I think I pronounced it right. You have to bear with me, I might pronounce things wrong. My grammar's not that good. UNESCO stands for United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organisation. Uh, so, <coughs> quite a powerful guy, really. Uh, was known for modern evolutionary synthesis, uh, very much like Darwin's theory. <coughs> Humanism. Uh, I think that's basically putting logic and reason before superstition and, and um, uh, maybe religious dogma and things like that. Uh, UNESCO, as we said, conservation, uh, I guess in nature and things, and eugenics. Uh, he was knighted in 1958. In 1959 he received a special award for the Lasker Foundation in the category Planned Parenthood. Now, have you never heard of that, that's another word for eugenics, planned parenthood. Makes sense, doesn't it, you know, we're going to plan who's, who are parents or who, re, who reproduces, and that's um, one of the big uh, issues with the brave new world, one of the big things, people don't reproduce naturally, they, they go to the, uh, the world controllers, you know, or they donate an egg or something like that, or there are many people that just are sterile, they're just literally um, almost cloned, you know. But planned parenthood, that's another word for eugenics. Uh, I think it was Margaret Sanger, uh, I think I pronounced her name, surname right. She, uh, I think she was in America and she was um, preaching abortion to, um, to, to many women of certain uh, stock and racial types, especially black people, black women. She was encouraging abortion. She wanted basically to uh, lower or maybe get rid of the, popu the black population in America, Margaret Sanger. And she, she planned parenthood, she was behind that as well. Uh, so we have Planned Parenthood, um, yeah, category Planned Parenthood, world population. Uh, uh, Huxley was a 
a prominent member of the British Eugenics Society, and it's and it he was its president from 1959 to 1962. So that's a bit about him. And I went into the intro in the last chapter. <coughs> um, and so let's just look. As I say, I photocopy some bits, and let's just let's just go through it bit by bit. Um, in the preface, um, let me read from this. It says here, you can see, there's a danger in these days of manifold information and broadcast amusement that the world will become divided into those who have to think for their living and those who never think at all. I am not speaking of those necessarily but limited <coughs> progress of thought needed to accomplish some routine of business, but the real thinkers. Yep, um, and I'll, I've skipped through this a bit, but here we read on, uh, Meanwhile, the occupation by which the average man is gaining his livelihood is becoming more standardised in its conditions, more limited in its scope, more definite in its routine. In the morning he reads his synthicated news and imbibes his, <coughs> his millionfold disseminated opinions. In the evening he goes to the cinema or turns on his wireless set. Remember this was first printed in 1926. Uh, <laughs> or if rather old-fashioned manipulates his gramophone. In any case he again receives impressions which are being or have been scattered scattered broadcast to millions of other human beings. And what is more serious, he is presented with his impressions, whether by newspaper, cinema, radio, or whatever else, in a form of demanding and minimum of thought. Sorry, in a form demanding minimum of thought. And indeed, usually like smoking, an agreeable substitution for that painful process of cere cerebration thinking which solitude or personal contacts might otherwise engender. So basically he's saying there's a problem here, we've got two, society seems to be, and probably maybe always has been in two classes, the thinkers, the doers, and the, uh, and basically the, uh, the pawns, you know, the people that don't think. And that's in the introduction there, so it's quite clear uh, where he's, you know, going, coming to here. Okay, <clears throat> let's read on. Oh, here we have from the introduction. Unless the civilized societies of today improve their organisation, unless they invent and enforce adequate measures for regulating human reproduction, for controlling the quantity of population and at least preventing the deterioration of quality of racial stock, they are doomed to decay and to be submerged in some new barbarian flood. To achieve this man must last, at last consent to think scientifically. Okay, so if you, I mentioned that in the uh, introduction. As I say, I'm going to break this down in chunks because I don't know how long I've got on this video, I don't want to uh, make a uh, part two and then find out I can't put it on YouTube because it's too long. So, um, so I do apologise for that. <clears throat> so we've gone on to the preface. And he goes into hereditary. Um, let me read, let me read the, the chapter layout just so you can get an idea of the thing, of the topics. So we've got hereditary, one and two, inheritance of acquired characters, the de determination of sex. Why do more boy babies die than girls? Uh, the dominant sex, biology in utopia, and he brings in uh, fictional writer H.G. Wells here. The control of the life cycle, 
the meaning of death, elixir vitae, if I pronounced that right, I don't know, birth control, Thomas Henry Huxley, is probably a blood relative, and religion, on the history of science, birds and the territorial system, <laughs> an hour psychology, evolution and purpose, the frog and biology, uh, that's interesting. Um, I, there he's discussing growth control through manipulation of the um, pituitary gland uh, and um, thyroid gland um, and other glands, the endocrine system, how they can uh, uh, regulate it their self uh, unnaturally. Um, that's interesting and uh, I'm going to go into that later. Uh, the tadpole study of developmental uh, physiology. So, so you can get a good idea there of what's being discussed. Uh, we're going to go and run through that in part three. So I'll be with you then. Thanks.